This week on the Virtual Skeptics, Bob pokes dead things with a stick and they don't explode. Eve <laughs> looks at her crystal ball and sees elves. Sharon loves rocks, strange sounds, and giant eyeballs. And Tim is here to talk about the year in Skeptools. I'm your host, Brian Gregory, and I'm not wearing any pants. Again. Yes. Again. Ever. Ever. <laughs> Why would you? Uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. That was not a good joke, I know. <laughs> okay, so our uh, panel is our regular panel this week. See Bob Blaskowitz, CSI Conspiracy Guy, web colonist, blogger for Skeptical Humanities, and Swift blog contributor, Eve Seabert, editor and blogger at Skeptical Humanities, and skeptically con uh, Skepticality contributor. That's a new one. Someone edited my stuff. Um, Sharon... <laughs> Sharon Hill, editor of Delphal News and author of CSI's Sound Sciencey web column, and Tim Fall Farley. Let me get it right. Folly, Folly. Um, Boy, leave one yes. week and you forget how to pronounce my name. <laughs> Some guy. Um, well, Tara, it's a hard one. Can I get through this? <laughs> Jared Apparently Phillip not. And creator of What's the Harm .net and Skeptical Software Tools blog. Yay! And this is the Virtual Skeptics. We're here. We're live. If you're watching. Uh, ask us questions. We'll put them on the, on the show. Uh, go to the Twitter feed. Use uh, Virtual Skeptics hashtag or mention us, Virtual Skeptics. Um, or go to Google Plus or the YouTube link. You comment on the YouTube link. And yeah, I was going to say something about a chat room that we're going to. I need a chance to mention to the guys. We're going to try to try to get a chat room up because it'll works better. Okay. So I just threw that in there. No one, everyone is just total surprised. But hey. <laughs> <sighs> cool. So let's do this. Yes. I'm totally prepared. I got slides and everything. All right. Oh, wow. it's this week in the robot apocalypse. <laughs> okay, this is a promo video for a project called Roboy out of University of Zurich. Uh, and blah blah blah. There's Dr. Rolf Pfeiffer, I believe it's called. Um, you got a little Osimo in the background there. Mm -hmm. There is. There is. They're building a robot boy out of plastic and actuators. That oh, are please say his name is Pinocchio. No, <laughs> it's called Roboy. I told you that. Is that a thing and like a pool boy? Mm, no. No. Right, no. It's, it's part creepy, part cute. Um, it's about three foot tall. The idea is to have linear actuators and design it like a, ro a human robot skeleton. And it's crowdsourced, which is huh. the coolest thing about this ever. You can go to their website. Actually, here, let me show you the picture of the finished thing. I'm getting the slide up. There we go. No, that's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so creepy. Isn't that funny looking? Now, the face was voted on on Facebook. There's a Facebook page for this guy. You can friend him. Um, <laughs> And uh, the project started about six months ago. Um, the idea was in nine months to go from idea to production, well, at least production of a prototype. There's a um, conference in Zurich in March. They're going to bring what they have and present it, talk about the technical details. The crowdsourcing is cool. If you go to their, their website, um, it starts at 25. It's um, Swiss francs. Uh, to, if you give 25 Swiss francs, you can get a free ticket to this unveiling and it goes up from there anywhere from like uh, little mock-ups of the of the robo boy roboy I'm saying it wrong to um, oh. visits you can actually if you if you pledge enough they will come to your event and like spend the day there and you can play with roboy so idea, what was what was crowdsourced was it the face or was it the, the design of the critter itself um, the, the the whole project for producing the prototype Oh, I see what they you're need, saying. They okay. need like 500,000. Crowdfunded, okay. 500,000 Swiss francs. They're out at 300,000 right now, I think. So you can still pledge and still get in on this. But um, I want one. Yeah. And, and part of the reason why I, I brought this up is I thought this would be perfect to help out Miranda. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> and that's just an inside Our... joke between her and me. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> My brain's going to all sorts of horrible, horrible places, and I don't want no. to alienate our one viewer. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we'll you've alienated our other viewer. You're oh! alienating me, Bob. <laughs> Man. 
So up next, Bob is going to talk about dead things. Well, sort of. Or... Yeah, um, dead things. Um, I'm, I'd like to talk about two things that that died or were dying in 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 2012, and things that I'm I'm happy to see stay dead. Um, the first was a uh, major bit of support for the notion um, or the practice of of what's called reparative therapy. Um, an influential psychologist who was partly responsible for the rewrite that removed homosexuality from the DSM's list of disorders, Robert Spitzer, uh, retracted his 2003 study uh, that has been used to make the, the, uh, a case that being gay is a choice. Um, that's not what he argued. In fact, the conclusion of this of original paper um, uh, read, quote, the majority of participants um, gave reports of change from predominantly or exclusively homosexual orientation before therapy to a predominantly or exclusively heterosexual orientation in the past year, end quote. Um, the study itself was really quite spectacularly flawed, and he seems to have been subject to um, all sorts of biases that nobody seemed to be able to talk him out of for some reason. And for somebody who is that well-known and that respected in the field, it, it seems to be really an outlier in his career. Um, it was a self-reported, uh, in-depth, uh, self-reported uh, data uh, from an in-depth phone interview of something like 200 people who had gone through reparative uh, therapy. Um, there seems to have been a strong selection bias um, and potential motivational biases introduced by the candidate pool, uh, many of whom were politically active ex-gay advocates and, and members of Exodus International. Um, there was no consistent treatment that was being examined. You know, like s some people, uh, half maybe went to a therapist, some went to pastors, and others had just gone through a private Bible study. So it was, it's hard to say what exactly was being tested there. Um, there were also memory and expectation biases uh, in there. It was uh, messy and probably wouldn't have made it through peer review, and we'll never know for certain because while it was published in the Archives of Sexual Behavior, it was published on the strength of Spitzer's name alongside uh, a, a number of vicious and, frankly, deserved criticisms. Um, it, it, it was a type of article that I hadn't heard of before, a Target article, I, that's something I've never come across, but um, so published to provoke discussion. Um, but even by the time uh, he he uh, gave it the results as a um, uh, paper, as, as a conference paper in 2001, and people were already crowing about it, and, and people were horrified by it. Um, well, this year he tried to make good. Um, in the same journal, uh, he wrote a letter saying that there was a fatal flaw in his study. Uh, quote, I offered several unconvincing reasons why it was reasonable to assume that the participants' reports of change were credible and uh, not self-deception or outright, outright lying. Not outright lying. That's something else entirely. <laughs> um, but the simple fact is that there's no way to determine if the participants' accounts of change were valid. I believe I owe the gay community an apology for my study, making unproven claims about the efficacy of rep reparative therapy. I also apologize to any gay person who has wasted time and energy undergoing some form of reparative therapy because they believed I had proven that reparative therapy worked with some highly motivated individuals. Um, so there was that um, um, rather important and very nice example of somebody coming around um, and accepting criticism um, and for something that really uh, impacted a lot of people uh, because the reparative therapy advocates started saying, look, we have this, you know, world-renowned psychologist on our side, therefore it works. Well, no, not really. Um, the other death that I'm, I'm very happy to talk about um, is the long drawn out, drawn out ongoing death of Scientology. Um, I, I want to see it suffer Woo! on its oh, way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's been imploding and, and, and getting pretty much only bad press for the whole of the last year. Um, there seemed to have been a, a large number of defections, some of them very important. It, it, they started, at least, uh, Scientology came back on my radar um, when Paul Haggis, uh, the, um, the guy who wrote Million Dollar Baby, defected. Um, and uh, very publicly, uh, it was covered, I think, in Vanity Fair last year. 
um, or a year before last now. Um, and uh, the Village Voice has been following Scientology uh, almost daily on their blog all year, and even before that. Tony Ortega is the, the, the editor-in-chief, and he was keeping a, a constantly updated blog. And so things started on the 1st of January. Like, you know, I don't believe in, in like, you know, prophecies and and bad signs but this this was a bad sign uh, on the first debbie cook a former uh member of the sea org and a very high ranking person inside scientology who was still in good standing and was not in contact with people in bad standing and this is extremely important for people on the inside of scientology sent out an unsolicited 12 uh, uh 12,000 copies of an email to people in the organization condemning David uh, Miss Cavage's turning the group into uh, away from being you know about the mission as L. Ron Hubbard saw it and towards quote a new age of continuous fundraising um, she talked about empty building uh, empty buildings that were going up uh, that uh, that the I, I believe that there is someone coming up your driveway, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's no problem. No, uh, a billion dollars in unused assets that the church was sitting on, um, and that she was she was mad that that people who had already been declared clear, which is you know a, a level Magic. that uh, yeah yeah basically that they were have having to um, redo more levels of auditing, and she saw that as kind of a ploy well, by Miss Cavage to, exactly, and and that that. Was and she said that she had been made poor because of it. Um, later on, um, uh, in the month, uh, Skeptic Magazine did a uh, a special issue, or I don't know if it was a special issue, but they did a an extended report on Scientology. A very special issue. A very <laughs> special one. It was all soft focus, and you know, <laughs> Michael Shermer and soft focus talking about it. Very tender words. Zanu. Yeah. The more yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, then there were a whole series of, of scandals that, with uh, John Travolta and male masseurs. Most of those have been – I'm not sure most, but many After of – After that wonderful movie he made. Ugh. Yeah. I don't think anything's ever has come of any of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, nothing has come of those. Those seem to have Lost been manufactured, it. but it was bad – it was bad publicity, yeah. um, and, 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 and that's something that um, is working really strongly against Scientology right now, um, uh, that there are, there are so many high-profile people that when they leave, even though their decision to leave a religious group is, isn't really a big deal you know, in terms of historical moment or anything, it, it, it's, um, uh, it's just straight-out bad press every time that someone does. Um, and so they're suffering from that. That includes uh, Lisa Marie Presley, um, who yeah. who left, um, and then even some people, um, you know, uh, L. Ron uh, Hubbard's granddaughter, uh, the Sham David Wow Mid guy, huh? The Sham Wow guy? You're kidding, really? <laughs> He's yes. an Scientologist too? Yes. Wow. Um, gosh, he tried to yeah. sue him. You know Nishka from Firefly, Adelaide oh, yeah? Nishka. Mm -hmm. He he was one. Wow. Yeah. Um, for a long time, apparently, uh, David Miscavige's dad, who have, who originally brought David into the organization, trying to cure his asthma. Um, Katie Holmes uh, split from Tom Cruise was really bad news for Scientology because they were brought under uh, intense media scrutiny. Um, an entire center in Haifa, Israel, defected in mass, and that was apparently a first. Um, there were allegations by. A, another former Sea Org member, Laura De uh, Crescenzo, De, uh, De Crescenzo, De Crescenzo. Um, there was the release of the movie The Master, which wasn't about Scientology, but was about Scientology. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying it's L. Ron Hubbard, but it's but L. Ron. Hubbard. Yeah, Hubbard. yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> um, that came out. Oh, it was was that September, or August, somewhere there. Um, Should I do my then, aliens guy face. Yeah, <laughs> and then the um, uh, a, a string of deaths at the Narcanon clinic. Uh, the the 
uh, drug treatment drug, center. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in in Oklahoma, their flagship center for the because they're the ones who know how the brain works and they can help you. Um, but some of their weird uh, treatments were things like intense staring drills, where you just stare at another person um, and talking to inanimate objects, weird stuff. Um, instead of, you know, actual help. Um, so there were three deaths in, in Oklahoma uh, since, I think, last October. Um, let me see. Um, there was also a death uh, actually here in Atlanta, and the uh, Narconon in, of Georgia has gotten in trouble with the regulator here, and they're about to have their license pulled. Right. Yeah. I'm heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah. The person who died or... For Scientology. Yes. Okay. Um, and so the um, – one facetiously and one genuinely. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. Um, yeah. Uh, and so there are also things uh, about lawyers destroying records of invest uh, for uh, – during investigations of members' deaths um, that um, – People should perhaps go to What's the Harm? You, you would think. Yes. Um, is there? Do you have a section on Scientology? I sure do. Yeah, very good. It's one of the easiest ones to compile. Oh, I'm sure <laughs> it is. So many websites about Scientology and so many. Well, there's an entire there's Operation Clambake too. Right. There, there are all sorts of um, uh, Scientology watchers <clears throat> who they just squat and gather information about Scientology. Um, let me see. Oh, the other thing uh, that there had there are reports that there had been auditions for Tom Cruise's wife. Yeah, yeah that was funny. Yeah, it was w and kind of sad. Very. Um, yeah. Um, and of course, and then, it was Rock of Ages. Yeah. Oh Lord, yeah. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Well, you would think that somebody who when th this is what happens when you deify a dipshit, right? I mean. <laughs> So the last thing that I kind of, well, there are two things I wanted to, to say that the, the numbers of of Scientology are far different than than what's being reported by the group. It's it seems like it's probably closer to forty thousand members than it is to the eight million worldwide members. Right. Um, and uh, just on the the very last days of the of the year, the Belgian government uh, uh, announced it would be prosecuting um, uh, Scientology as a criminal organization um, for fraud. So that will be very interesting to see what happens there. Yeah. Um, but uh, so Scientology had, had, you know, took some well-deserved punches this year. Um, I did want to mention I, when I was going through this, I was looking at doubtful news, kind of to look at the year in review and flipping through and Oh my God, Sharon, how do you do this? There's so much there. You covered, I think, just about absolutely everything. It, it really was remarkable. There was even one. Do you remember Chippy? Chippy from the Chippewa River? It was a statue that was placed in yes, the yes, Wisconsin yes. River yes. that just appeared. Uh -huh. That's like, I, I looked at the picture. That's, that's right by river. where I work. <laughs> that's our river. Yeah. That's a cute story. It, it was it was very cool. Apparently, it, it, the last that I saw it was up again. I have to go check that out now because Chippy. <laughs> so, I wa yeah. wanted to say, though, about the Scientologists, one thing to keep in mind is all those high-profile defections, they're still Scientologists. They're still, free, most of them, free zoners. They still believe the, all the crazy crap. Well, uh -huh. that was the thing with um, uh, Debbie Cook. Um, she was saying, you know, we really do want to... Uh, uh, KSW keeps Scientology working um, and uh, so she really does have a love for for L a close personal relationship with L. Ron Hubbard and she tried to like rein it in like this was just for people inside I don't want this published beyond no that's not going to happen hmm. um, but yeah so oh Bob you're was, an SP yeah I am and proud of it <laughs> so Good riddance. Dead things, Mikey. Yes. Dead things. SP. Dead things. Bob, while you were talking, I added two links to your show links. Uh, just to uh, uh, Tony Ortega has left uh, Village yeah. Voice right. and now blogs at his own blog, but he's continuing his Scientology stuff and working on a book. 
Yeah, and I put the link to that in the show notes. I and, can't wait to uh, see the book. It, it, it's, he has so much information. It's yeah. It's, he comes up with the just. He's got so many good contacts that he comes up with these really obscure stories. And Jim Lippard's article from that Skeptic yeah. Magazine issue is now online. And feel so free to add what's the harm. The issue. Feel free to add what's the harm to it too. Yeah, people know how to fuck that. That's <laughs> a, hey. The guy who runs that site's a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, you can, he can still be down. right occasionally. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Speaking of dead things, um, <laughs> he used to talk about elves. They're not that dead. The They're segue, immortal. Not a segue. <laughs> They're alive in our heart. <laughs> well, I, uh, we have I will get to elves, here. but but first, you know, the new year is traditionally a time where uh, when psychics and astrologers produce predictions. Um, often, <laughs> enough of these are sufficiently vague or statistically extremely likely that they can count as almost inevitable hits, like there will be earthquakes. Um, and some are very likely, if not actually inevitable, like a much married celebrity is, will get divorced or an elderly sub celebrity in fragile health will die. And of course, many of the predictions just turn out to be not true at all. But the psychics either hope or assume that most people won't go back at the end of the year to check their beginning of the year predictions. So I see no reason why I shouldn't become part of this proud tradition. You know, as long as no permanent records made of my predictions <laughs> or anything. It's, we're not recording this week, right? Can we all do predictions? Yeah. No. Hmm? I no. thought of it first. Okay, first. So my general predictions... Um, sort of, you know, worldwide basis. Um, Barack Obama will be inaugurated for a second term. Going out there on will, a limb there. <laughs> yeah, no. that's, I know. Wow. There will be some natural disasters in places that are prone to natural disasters. Mm, mm, mm. And on June 9th, 2013, at 11.43 a.m., <coughs> Greenwich Mean Time, Jesus Christ will appear in the Gloucestershire town of Chipping Sodbury <laughs> and declare a giant turnip to be the one true God. That's now, not specific at all. I'm a little less sure of this last prediction. It, um, <laughs> it could actually be July. Um, we could also I, make if, that one happen. What if it's a rutabaga? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 we'll just have to see. Now, I also have predictions for all of my uh, fellow virtual skeptics. So, awesome. Bob. Shut up, Eve. <laughs> <laughs> there we she go. You, you will be loud throughout much of no. 2013. Really? Mm. Yep. There will be much loudness. Yay. Small, much small children will tremble in fear and draw closer to their mothers <laughs> when they hear you laugh. Um, <laughs> Many things will outrage you. You will outrage. No, you, <gasps> and you will complain about them on Twitter. Hmm. Also, sentences making complete ones hard. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Yes. Your children will be a source of joy and pride in the new year. Yay! Oh. You will acquire a new hat. It may look like this one. <laughs> I want very that lucky. Hat. Wait, I can't see it. <laughs> Make it go away now. All it's right. A, it's like a Kermit hat. Yes, I love it. I was looking for a cheese head, but I couldn't find one. Um, <laughs> I see you floating as if in space, but not actually in space. And I also see vomit. Lots <laughs> and lots of vomit. <laughs> yes. Then in October, oh, I hope so. You, you will be killed by robots, horribly, oh, horribly maimed, mangled, dismembered, and killed. Oh, Passersby will be amazed at the unusually large amounts of blood, <laughs> <laughs> and wow. this will signal the beginning of the real robot apocalypse. Are you sure he won't Where just I be go? He'll just be <laughs> become a Cyberman. No, uh, exterminated. Uh, okay. Aww. Yeah, I know. I know. Sad. Dude, I know that, that's that's a tough one, man. Yeah. Sharon, uh -oh. your children will be a source of frustration and irritation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, 
there will be many news stories. You will doubt many of them. <laughs> I also see a tall, dark stranger. Very tall and quite dark and very, very hairy with extremely <laughs> large feet. <laughs> Unfortunately, the vision, vision is kind of blurry, right? really blurry. Um, I can barely make it out. It's, it's as if this tall, dark stranger almost doesn't exist at all. Wow. Uh, somehow, though, uh, he will be a source of puns for Dr. Atlantis. <laughs> Tim, you will also meet a mysterious tall stranger. <laughs> Wait, no. You will meet people who will describe you <laughs> as a mysterious, <laughs> mysterious tall stranger. I saw um, that one coming. I feel I should do your prediction in quatrains, uh, <laughs> preferably in archaic French, because a Canadian with a fondness for incomprehensible French quatrains <laughs> will continue to be an irritation in your life. Um, I can't do French, but here's a quatrain. <laughs> Lying awake in fear a man will rob us, rob our car, our home, and our farm. Has Tim trod on the legal rights of Mabus? No, he alerts us to what causes harm. Okay, the scansion is awful, but the, the spirits like don't it. really care about poetic niceties. And, oh, they're uh. gone now. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Um, but then, okay, my favorite weird story, quickly, um, of 2012 concerns Arni Jonsen, member of the Icelandic Parliament or All Thingy who had a 30-ton boulder, along with its three generations of elves, mm -hmm. move to his home in uh, Hrfthabol in the Westman Islands. Um, Arni had uh, totaled his car near the rock, and he believes that he survived unscathed because of the beneficent influence of the elves. So he consulted with elf expert Ragan Hildur Jon's daughter, before moving the rock, uh, and she said, an elderly couple lived in the upper story of the rock, and uh, it's a split-level rock, um, and a younger <laughs> couple, along with their three children, uh, lived downstairs. And the elves were happy to be moved as long as their rock could stand on grass so they could keep little elf sheep. And then uh, the elves travel to their new home in a basket lined with sheepskin. And I'm not sure if the sheepskin came from, you know, regular sheep or the, you know, many, the many uh, little elf sheep. I, I'm just not sure about that. But that is my favorite story of the year because elves in a rock. <laughs> no, because Iceland. Let's Well, fail. yes, but uh, elves in a rock in Iceland. We did Can't that, that for the um, yeah. oh, what, the Week in Woo, the yeah. short-lived yeah. show we did in Atlanta, yeah. which looked really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing that and thinking, wow, Eve can pronounce all those names so well. <laughs> it's still yeah. out there on Vimeo if you want it to see is. it. It is. In all its green screen wonderfulness. Yes. Cool. Awesome. Well, I have a transition then. Yes, huh? go for it. Your segues are better than mine. Um, we're still in Iceland. Yay! Yay! I had a, a top five of my favorite stories for this year, and my number five was the Iceland worm. That was pretty cool. Better known as the uh, uh, Lagerflot worm. So, uh, if you, is there a, uh, I have a picture of it. Now, there was a video. Oh, this is going to be the trouser snake, is it? No, it's not. No, okay. this is the ice worm. So um, this Different was a video, worm. and I, I don't have the video to show, but if you remember this one, uh, he uh, somebody filmed this in, in a glacial river in Iceland, and of course it's icy, and this thing looks like a very large serpent, but we can't really tell. And it looks there, really convincing, though. It was a strange video. Thing, yeah. yeah. I mean, it had like a bulging head, looks like it's got eyes, and then it looked like it was undulating in a serpent motion behind it. And even though it was found in the, in the river, uh, there happened to be a local myth of this worm-like creature that lived in the nearby lake. 
So when the the guy took this film, they this got attributed to the Iceland worm. And it turns out that it wasn't a worm because snakes can't survive in glacial rivers. But it magic turned, ones can. Magic ones can. This this would have been a magic one. Pretty cool. Um, it was actually a, a net, word. a net of some sort that was the river was making it undulate like this. So uh, sadly, it wasn't a real monster. Did did, did somebody were they able to confirm that it was a, a net? Did they? No, it somebody was did just a really suspected. good analysis. Of yeah, it. yeah, yeah, showing that it there it, there's no actual forward progression. Correct. There's no forward motion. Just look like it was. And so instead of saying it was a real creature, we could pretty much say it was some sort of fabric or net that was in the water, not under any propulsion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so second, my, my second favorite story um, was, next slide, the giant eyeball. Ooh. I love this story so much because <laughs> when... Do you walk upon the beach, this was in Pompano Beach, Florida, and come across a giant blue eyeball? That, that's once. It was awesome. Well, you did? No, you don't. No. No. You're right. Once, <laughs> once in a lifetime you do. Because eyeballs don't survive. Once they're, you know, they, they come out of a dead creature, they just get eaten. Num, or num. yeah, or or they're they're fragile. So this thing showed up on the beach, and the people were smart enough to collect it and put it on ice and send it to the correct uh, laboratory to have it tested. And quite immediately, they they were pretty sure that it wasn't a squid. Uh, I don't. You could probably tell because actually eyes developed simultaneously or or independently a couple times. So squid eyes are actually different than what human eyes would be. Mm -hmm. And fish eyes. So they, they've pretty much figured out it was some sort of deep sea fish. And within a couple of days, they could figure out that it was a swordfish eye that had been cut out with a sharp object. So it was some fisherman that had caught a, a critter. But what I liked about this story is not only was that really cool visual, but you knew it would get an answer. You, you knew that they would probably be able to figure out what it came from. And if yeah. they couldn't, then it was something really neat that we hadn't discovered before. So I, I really like that. There was no way it wasn't going to be cool. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Although people were, were disappointed it wasn't a giant squid or wasn't Cthulhu or, you know, some sort of new and, and fantastic monster. Just oh, a you don't want to be Cthulhu. Imagine I know, how that would pissed be, off he'd be. That'd be bad. Where's my eye? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So next, so sad. <laughs> next was this story from earlier in the year. Another beach find was these strange-looking rocks. Da -da. This oh, woman yeah. in yeah. California, um, and I'm going to give it away right here, on a beach owned by uh, Camp Pendleton, the marine base mm -hmm. in California, uh, picked up these interesting rocks. And she happened to pick up the two that were none of the none of the rest of the rocks on the beach were like this. She put them in her pocket. They dried off. By the time she got home, she was in her kitchen. The rocks began to burn. They began to smoke. They uh, caught her pants on fire. She ended up with very severe burns on her mm. legs and on her hands as she took the rocks out and threw them onto the floor of her kitchen. Um, it turns out that immediately when I saw this, and I had been asking a couple people what this could be, that looked like phosphorus on the rocks. And yeah. and one of the things that phosphorus, white phosphorus does is once it, it dries out, it spontaneously uh, burns yeah. in oxygen. So that seemed like the most reasonable explanation. Really? Spontaneously. Yeah. Yeah, it once it reaches a certain temperature, yeah. you know, sort of like sodium, you it mm -hmm. doesn't, yeah, it, doesn't yeah. Yeah. it reacts it just, in oxygen, yeah. it reacts in air, and um, it's it's often used in military munitions for yeah. flares and you know it's WP tracers, tracers. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's that's pretty much the only place it's used uh, extensively, and with Camp Pendleton just being down the road, there was speculation that perhaps they had done some offshore exercises and maybe flares. Or um, some extra phosphorus was was accidentally dumped, got washed up on shore, or was very very old, got deposited on these rocks, and then these rocks are washed up on shore, and she just happened to pick up the bad yep. rocks. So today I actually got an update on this story. Ooh. Um, it was uh, an investigation was done to try to find out what had happened. Now they scanned the beach, 
and, and went back to it and tried to find more of this, and they couldn't find any more of these rocks. And um, Orange County Public Health Service Services uh, had an, an in independent lab confirm that it was phosphorus. And then in June, Kate Pendleton announced that they would investigate. So the internal report was done, but it's not been made public. So they're not saying that it actually was a military um, mm. mess up, but it pretty much clearly so, was. Sounds like it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. where else ball, could it have place. come from? Yeah. yeah. Okay, my, my second favorite story, I don't have a slide for this, so, was um, this family in New Jersey who moved into a rental house and then ran out a couple days later saying that the place was haunted. It was like another Amityville Get horror. out. Okay. So if you, <laughs> a man, uh, um, uh, he and his girlfriend moved in. They, uh, she had just recently been divorced. She had two children, and they all moved into this house, very nice house in, in Toms River, New Jersey. And they claimed that the lights were going on and off. They heard footsteps um, th that were coming through the vents, muffled sounds and stuff like this. So it just didn't seem all that scary. No walls of blood, no flies, what? no pig animals looking in the window. So disappointing. It was, it was, no elves. It was just lame. And the video of the news report came out and I just laughed and I had to include it in, in the news story that I did where the paranormal group came in and investigated and they had this um, bowling pin set up in the basement and it was next to, uh, you know, your basement will have these poles holding up the, the ceiling. Yeah. And the, the bowling pin <coughs> was next to the pole. And as the paranormal investigators walked by, the bowling pin fell over. <gasps> dum, dum, dum. Paranormal activity. Bowling ghosts? <laughs> and then the, um, the lights would flicker on and off. Well, my lights flicker on and off. I, if they're remote control lights, they do that sometimes. You know, or the bulbs going bad, or the electric in the house is, is wonky. Terrible, terrible evidence. When I put this story up, the paranormal investigation team that was called in That's now right. they didn't they didn't call in an electrician, as far as I know. They didn't call in an exterminator. They called in a paranormal investigation team, and I was pretty furious about that. <laughs> so I, I sort of let let that go in the story, and they came on the website and started to talk back. To me, the um, the guy who ran the paranormal investigation site was pretty okay, and he explained to me that they did sort of get in an exterminator, and, and I said, "Let's." I'm glad you let me know. The other members of his team came on to tell me that they there were feces flinging demons in the house, and they were harassed. And I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm talking about. Feces, feces flinging demons. That's yes. actually monkeys. Yeah. Did did yeah. they get the exterminator to take care of the monkeys? Demon monkeys. <laughs> Monkey exterminators are really expensive. Ghost monkeys? Yeah. Not this, really. They just come in with a hammer. It was just <laughs> oh. it was a very interesting exchange with these folks. Because I'm like, wow. okay, where's your evidence? Oh, well you weren't there. Yeah. You, Norm yeah, you weren't there, you don't know. Oh uh, no oh, the best one was when the kid told me I took a science class in college. Who the hell are you? <laughs> a whole class? I took more than one. <laughs> wow. I don't know if I actually sent him wow. copies of my degrees um, <laughs> and my master's thesis, but I didn't really have to. I, I know I he became quite belligerent and abs uh, used obscenity. So I just would email those back to the guy who ran the paranormal site and says, "Do you really want this idiot?" representing you and he said he's not even a member of our group so I don't even know where he came from it was just funny Wow. Um, and then my final number one story was beginning of last year sounds of the apocalypse do you remember yes. the yes. trumpets oh, of the apocalypse yeah. oh I loved that story it turns out that most of them were hoaxed and uh, or they were just industrial noises that people weren't used to hearing. Every once in a while, I when I'm out walking the dog, I hear like somebody start up a leaf blower on the next neighborhood over, or a truck, or a, you know some piece blower. of equipment, and that I always so think far. of that story. So <laughs> Weather conditions can make things sound weird, in in yeah. some cases, and I think that a lot of people were uh, primed to listen for this stuff, or they were nervous about 2012, and sure. that went away. Faded away. 
Yep. So those were my five favorite stories of the year. I saw some stuff on your on your site that talked about um, booms before earthquakes. Was that yeah. is, is that a thing now? That's a, that's always been a thing. Yeah. You will sometimes hear uh, the earthquakes. They, they will make a sound if they're very shallow. They will make sounds, mm -hmm. and they won't necessarily be recorded on seismographs if they're very shallow. Okay. Wow, whacking. So before we move on to Tim, uh, I wanted to reiterate that we are live and uh, we've got quite a few people watching and no one's asking any questions. So. Why aren't you asking questions, people? Because oh, they're asking questions. We give well, they're and chatting. We give and we get. Oh, okay. They're chatting and making comments. We had someone okay. who was actually harassed by Scientologists in the Ooh. YouTube comments. Oh, Lord. Well, sorry. Yeah. yeah. He took a... Uh, Isn't that what they do? Like instead of going oh, door to door and handing you the watchtower, they harass you online and threaten to sue you? Yeah. Well, they apparently, I've never actually seen this, but apparently hang out in places with their their little machine with the yeah. Dixie the cups English. and, and uh, invite people to take a personality. Right. I've never seen it, but yeah. I've, I've heard stories about people being approached with about the, the intelligence test. Yeah, and basically yeah. it's a test that you can't. Pass. Yeah, and it's a high pressure sales tactic. Yeah, e even but the test is designed yeah. to find flaws in your personality, no matter what you write on the piece of paper. Right, even if you, because there's like a list of the correct answer somewhere. But even if you do all of Elrond's uh, correct answers, they'll still tell you that right. if you walk out right now, bad <laughs> things are going to happen. Yeah. Well, the the the. There was a Scientology group that went through Wash U and a couple of skeptics who we know there, uh, Wash, Wash University in St. Louis. Um, they came and did a demonstration. Huh? Nothing. Apparently yeah. it's right in the next room from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right down there. Um, they, uh, you know, brought their e-meters to, to campus, and um, uh, one of the physicists that, that we know there, um, Ben uh, Birch, I believe, uh, he uh, was able to actually physically control the motion of the little <laughs> the, the the little indicator by a needle. That's the thing. Um, <laughs> by uh, exposing more and more surface area of his hand to the little, right. it was basically measuring resistance, electrical resistance yeah. Yeah. across the. And um, yep. So. So yep. Tim. The year in Skep Tools. Yeah, the year in Skep Tools. I had this post that I did back in April uh, that asked whether or not 2012 is going to be the year in Skep Tools. But before I talk about that, I don't want to end on a total downer. So let me talk a little bit about um, obituaries of 2012 now, and then we can talk about something fun. Uh, the uh, for more a while, dead things. Yeah. Yeah, more dead Don't things. Poke them. Well, for a mm. while, a few years ago at TAM, I had the idea that, you know, TAM is kind of like the annual gathering of skeptics. We should do something like they do at the Oscars or whatever and remember who's gone by in the past year. And uh, particularly these days, since the, you know, so much of the woo woo stuff started in the 70s and the 60s and stuff, a lot of these folks are dying and occasionally we lose a prominent skeptic or supporter or something so I do this slideshow that we run at uh, yeah. TAM in the break and uh, uh, I actually, I'll, there'll be a link in the show notes because I always post the slideshow online but then at the end of the year I kind of redo a list for the Randy blog and I'm actually putting it together right now uh, not right this second but um, uh, so I was just going to, we're going to link to the one from July in the show notes, uh, and you can see all those, and it's got pictures of everybody. But there were a few that have happened between July and now uh, that were kind of interesting. Uh, Martin Fleischman, uh, the mm -hmm. cold fusion guy, died in August. Uh, Sun Young Moon. Yeah. Um, he was going to be another one of the things I poked with a stick, but I decided. You yeah. Know. Uh, Thomas Saz, who was a... Uh, 
a well-known psychiatrist, and he's kind of one of these interesting characters in that he was once, he's been given Humanist of the Year awards, and he was well-regarded in a lot of communities, but he also, because he was a noted critic of, of psychiatry and how psychiatry does things, even though he himself is a, was a psychiatrist, um, he, in some venues, ended up allied with Scientology. So he was on the board of their uh, uh, one of their front organizations, uh, Citizens Commission for Human Rights, or on the advisory board, or something. So a lot of people see that and think, "Oh, well, this guy is you know a nut because he's allied with sci Scientologists." But well, to be with that like, group, it's a little bit more complex than that. Yeah. I mean, he was a real scientist, and uh, it happened that some of his interests aligned with some of their interests and I don't know if he remained a supporter of theirs to the end or if he realized uh, what they were up to or what but I always mm. like to point him out in that you know everybody always likes to say you know like when I used to do these obituary lists I would segregate them into a list of skeptics and woos and I kept running into people that it's like yeah. well, which list do I put this person in you know yeah. they did some skeptical things and then you know there were some great scientists who ended up doing some crazy woo woo stuff at the end of their lives so oh, the I've stopped yeah. even trying well, when to they get out of their fields. Yeah. 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 So uh, some of the other ones uh, who we've lost near the end of the year, Gore Vidal was noted yeah. as a humanist and atheist. Um, uh, Sergi Kapitsa was the editor of the Russian edition of Scientific American, and he hosted a show in Russia called Evident But Incredible, which was kind of... Uh, the Russian version of uh, the, uh, you know, one That's of those incredible. kind of skeptical shows. Uh, no, I'm thinking, uh, what was the Leonard Nimoy uh, show? Uh, In Search Of. Yeah, In Search yeah, Of, yeah, something yeah. like, something to that effect. Um, and, of course, Paul Kurtz and Leon Jaroff, we lost in October within a day of each other. Uh, Paul Kurtz was the founder of PSYCOP and, and CSH and CSI and CFI. Um and Leon Jaroff was an editor of Time Magazine who, who started Discover Magazine and really was kind of pushing skeptical stuff in Time and Discover for a long time. Um, and Mike LaSalle, who was a, basically a producer on Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, and, mm. and if you ever you know had any interactions with them, you'd run into Mike in the forums and stuff like that. Um, the interesting one we were talking about before the show started, I was not totally aware of this guy. I guess I had encountered his name. He was a well-known, it's sort of a trivial, sort of a trivial connection. He was a well-known Mayan scholar, you know, a real scientist mm -hmm. who actually studied the Mayans and written many books and, and done the work. And his name was Robert J. Scherer, and he was the guy who, in a 1983 reissue of a textbook about the Mayans, had calculated the date, December 21st, 2012. Mm -hmm. he as actually, the end of the calendar. Well, as the end of the 13th Bakhtun. Right, no but he didn't make any meaning, right? Right. He had, you know, he didn't. Uh, I couldn't find any reference of him ever interacting with those the people who believed all that craziness. But when that 1983 book came out, people saw that table where they had correlated things and figured out where the calendar lined up, and that date, and they latched on to his version of the end of the 13th Bakhtun, and assigned all this meaning to it that he had never intended. Well, it turned out he died in September, so he never got to find out. Wow, that what was going happen. to happen? Yeah. That nothing would happen. Although I'm sure he was pretty sure of that. Um, <laughs> uh, sort of a local one here in Atlanta. If you follow uh, chiropractic, one of the actually the biggest chiropractic college is here in Atlanta. It's called Life Chiropractic, and they're kind of one of the centers of. If you, I don't want to get into all the details, but there's kind of a split in chiropractic. Mm -hmm. of the people who believe the old crazy stuff and the people who yeah. actually want to be physical therapists and do things kind of scientifically. And this guy was the center, or, or for a long time, was the center of the old crazy stuff part. His name was Sid Williams. Uh, 
and he founded that school until they had to run him out because uh, they had to. He basically had to quit because they had screwed up their accreditation a few years ago, wow. and they had to uh, quit him out of the thing. And he died on December twenty seventh of a so, broken heart. Of yeah, of a subluxation. Sub, yeah. Subluxation. Of the subluxation. Spine. Yeah. So I'll do a post in the next oh, few days, probably. On, can uh, I mention uh, one? Randy.org. Oh, sure. I'm always um, looking for ones that I missed. Yeah, uh, Philip Coppins died, um, who is uh, on Ancient, Ancient Aliens. Aliens. Mm -hmm. um, he was, uh, when we talked to him, Eve, I, I don't know if you remember this, but he, he was in some discomfort when yeah, we met him in October. Oh, wow. Um, and he thought that was some sort of connective tissue. Yeah, or infection or something. Huh. Yeah, and he was he, he was being treated for it like it was like a low grade infection or something. Um, but uh, it turns out it was angiosarcoma, mm -hmm. and he'd been in the hospital. Uh, I think at the beginning of December, and he I, I guess it finally got so bad that he came you know he came to a crisis point, and it's a, a, a cancer I think of the inner lining of the. Uh, 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 the heart? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to guess the heart. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I also saw something, though, that it seems that it can be in other places. As well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, the inside of, of veins, I think, is yeah. the... Yeah. And so um, it, it seems it came to a crisis, and very quickly after that, um, he, he died a, about a week ago or so. Um, okay. it was really I was not aware of that, so yeah. good. I'll make go, sure I list him. Go on to Doubtful News under obituaries. He's listed there. Um, same with William Roll, famous parapsychologist, also died this past year. Yeah, also a Georgia connection. He used to teach at uh, West Georgia. Well, if you got something to say about Skeptools, do it really quick. We got oh, yeah, low just, on time. Oh uh, yeah, you're the Skeptools. Uh, just kind of uh, the uh, the one that I was really anticipating for 2012 was Hypothesis. Uh, which had a, f a well known uh, uh, Kickstarter, but they are basically taking the slow route because they're trying to do it right. So they, they sent an email out to their supporters uh, the day before yesterday, and they've made a lot of progress, uh, and they are going to go into alpha test soon. But I was going to, in the show notes, I'll link to three of what I thought were the top new skep tools of 2012, three of many tools that got started, but one of course is Rebutter from uh, Shane Greenup, yep. uh, our Australian friend, um, that allows you to link rebuttals to their original article or debunkings to their original article. Another one is um, Truth Market, which is uh, still kind of building up a following, but it's an interesting thing where you can actually put money up and say, hey, I want you to uh, prove that uh, you know your crazy assertion that homeopathy works, and here's five thousand dollars if you can prove it, and it's sort of crowdfunding, crowdsourcing of sort of a challenge kind of format. And then uh, one that uh, they were um, that I think could be very interesting to skeptics. It's a little bit outside our realm, but uh, it's called Pundit Tracker. And I talked about it on the show yeah, before, yeah. where they're basically keep keeping track of predictions and having people vote on the site about how bold the predictions are to kind of predict whether or not the person's going out on a limb or if they're just predicting the sun's going to rise tomorrow, and then weighting that based on how well they did. And they give ratings at the end of the year, and like, for instance, they'll tell you exactly who the worst uh, political pundit was of 2012. They have some ho fairly hilarious blog posts about stuff like that. And they'll tell you who the most accurate pundit was. There's one sports guy on ESPN who was crazy accurate in his predictions according to Pundit Tracker, which was an interesting thing to know. So they had a blog post recently where they were saying, well, what other categories they do? They do po politics, uh, finance, and uh, uh, sports. Uh, and they kind of lump technology in with finance right now. And I was pushing... I posted and I suggested other people's post on their thing to get them to do psychics. Psychics, yeah. yeah. Because it would fit perfectly where people could vote on how bold the psychic is being and then they could track it later and they could give you a score. Um, yep. So that was it. Those were the kind of the three top skip tools of this year, but there were many others and I mentioned them all on my blog. I love awesome. Rebutter. I think that that has immense we got to get people in there putting stuff in though that's you have to contribute yep. well, yep. crowdsource projects everybody has to help yeah I, the the way that i've been using it was for the brzezinski stuff um every time that i found a copy of that movie 
uh, Brzezinski, uh, I would make sure that there is a, a little rebutter flag there um, cool. that, that leads to Dave Gorski's analysis of the movie, just yeah. so that people can see that it's not the whole story. Cool. Yep. All right. We're running out of time. Okay, we're running out of time. I need a book time real quick. Everybody got a book? Do we have time for <laughs> Who wants that? to go first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I can go. Uh, go pop. Yeah, I'll find a book here somewhere. All right. Uh, in his analysis of Beowulf, Cooper discusses words, phrases, and passages in some depth, giving the impression that he has some familiar, familiarity with Old English. In one instance, he provides his own translation of a short passage. The passage is not particularly difficult, and the gist of his translation is accurate enough, but reveals he does not actually understand how the language works. Mm. I don't know. It sounds great, though. <laughs> Go, Eve. Uh, Professor and plant researcher Henry G. Walters speculated in 1915 about the potential for crossbreeding carnivorous and poisonous plants. He <laughs> believed that if a poisonous plant had, quote, the semi muscular system possessed by the carnivorous plants, it would be more dangerous than the cholera. Unquote. Dr. Walters declared that plants were capable of love and that they also had memories, implying that they might also hold a grudge as lovers do. The deadly nightshade, he believed, was filled with hatred. <laughs> Go, Sharon. Somewhere around Chiswick, Aziraphale scrabbled vaguely in the scree of tapes in the glove department. What's a velvet underground? He said. You wouldn't like it, said Crowley. Oh, bebop. You know, Aziraphale, that probably if a million human beings were asked to describe modern music, they wouldn't use the term bebop, said Crowley. Ah, this is more like it. Tchaikovsky, opening a case with slotted cassette into the blog punk. You won't enjoy it, sighed Crowley. It's been in the car for more than a fortnight. I don't recognize this, he said. What is it? It's Tchaikovsky's Another One Bites the Dust, said Crowley, <laughs> closing his eyes as they went through the song. To while away the time, they crossed the sleeping children to also listen to William Byrd's We Are the Champions and Beethoven's I Want to Break Free. Neither was as good as Vaughn <laughs> Williams' Fat Bottom Girls. <laughs> I swear I know this book, but yeah, I can't come up with it. You probably will. Tim, go ahead. Gideon, was, Gideon was an ancient Hebrew who uh, rid Israel of a tribe of poachers called the Midianites. Gid's strategy was original. He armed 300 warriors with lamps, pitchers, and tump trumpets. In the middle of the night, they surrounded their enemy's camp and started blasting away on their horns. Having got the sleeping Midianites' attention, the attackers smashed their pitchers, brandished their lamps, and screamed, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon! Mm. You'll never guess what book that is. <laughs> Okay, this is a diabolically simple method for a card trick that will fool even seasoned magicians. How it looks. You begin by running through the deck, pulling out random cards that you feel a psychic connection with. After pulling out 15 to 20 of these cards, you, they are shuffled, and your subject chooses one and replaces it back in the pack. All the psychic cards are then thoroughly shuffled through... By, uh, shuffled by you and your target. Hell, you can even shuffle all the psychic cards into the plain Jane ones as well. No matter how well they're shuffled, after you run through the entire deck of cards, you'll know which ones belong to your subject. Uh, and I'll, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. I won't give away the trick. Okay. Alright. So, the reveal? The reveal. Go. Uh, monsters and Dragons and Dinosaurs, Oh My, Creationist Interpretations of Beowulf by Eve Seabird in the, <laughs> in the I was I was almost going to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in the current issue of Skeptical Inquirer. Yay. Yay. I have more Mine, <laughs> Mine is Wicked Plants, The Weed That Killed Lincoln's Mother and Other Botanical Atrocities by Amy Stewart. <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> mm. <laughs> go, go share. Good omens. Terry yeah. Pratchett. Oh, Terry Gaiman. Pratchett. Yep. <laughs> was in Scientology. Neil Gaiman, I believe, when he was a little kid. Mm. Yep. Penn, Penn and Teller's How to Play, play in Traffic. traffic. Yep. That um, was and a story. I, I, mine was on Kindle, so I'm going to show you the game. Amazon link. It's uh, whoops. <laughs> No, oh, Scam School. Scam. Yeah, it's Scam School. Brian Brushman. Scam School. Cool. Which is, uh, if you get it on Kindle, it's great because it has like links to the audio and the videos for all I have it. Yeah. It's really good. Now, um, announcements? Yep. A couple of uh, Yeah, there's a couple in the file. If 
you have the f show notes open. Uh, I got one from you. Registration is open for, for Skeptech in Minneapolis, April 5th and 6th. Tim is speaking. Yep. Um, and they just added... Go ahead and read this. because Maggie Kurth Baker from Boing Boing. Oh, wow. Ooh, She's their yeah. technology, you know, science uh, correspondent. And she's going to, they just added her as a guest. Wasn't there another, oh, the other announcement was, was the article in yeah. Skeptical. Eve's yeah. article. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Skeptical I'm Inquiry. also. In the latest Skeptical Inquiry. Skeptical Inquiry, yep. January, February issue. And I'm also on the latest uh, edition of Monster Talk, talking about monster yes. stories of the year. So check that out. And that was oh. fun talk. Oh, and uh, I mentioned it on Twitter the other day, but just another thank you to the Skeptics Guide guys who were very sweet to me in their latest podcast. They were listing their top Skeptics of 2012, and they they mentioned me. Because oh, you're yeah. a ninja. Because I'm a ninja. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Actually, the word ninja is in the title of my Skeptools talk, or Skeptech talk that I'm working <laughs> on for April. Um, and I guess I have a shortly a, 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 a new... Hey, <laughs> <laughs> we're out of time. Yeah, I have a, a new Conspiracy Guy article going up, um, so you can do that. Okay, and now the time now is the time on the show when we dance. <laughs> Carol, <sighs> yes. What? Oh, That's yeah, Kermit Boo. hat. Dance. Kermit, Kermit. Yes. Virtual Skeptics is an independent production of Doubtful News. What's the harm about net skeptical humanities and me? Our logo was designed by Sarah Mayhew at sarahmayhew.com, and our theme music is by Trevor and used with permission. And that's, that's it.